Hello, it's me. The song stuck in my head. <laughs> What's up, everybody? Welcome back to Pens and Team. My name is Carrie, and today we're reviving the Second Thoughts series. What are we reviving it for? This pen right here. This is the Sailor. <laughs> oh man, this is the Sailor Pro Gear Imperial Black. And if I could sing the theme song I want to sing, ooh, you know it. Uh, I could already get copyrighted for the intro. Who knows? But John Williams is the man. Anyways, this pen right here, second thoughts. What do I think? I've had this for a very long time now. It is still not mine. <laughs> the uh, person that lent it to me uh, was moving. So uh, let me a bunch of the pens um, to use, try out, uh, keep for a uh, few months. Um, so that way, you know, it doesn't have to, to move that along with them. So I've been able to have this now for quite some time. What do I think? Well, my first review is pretty positive. Um, I'm not gonna go into super heavy, heavy details about this pen um, because I've already done a full review, which I will link in the iCard. But what do I think about this? after having used it for a very long time. Well, I still love the look. <laughs> I still think that it is beautiful. Um, I really like the Pro Gear size. Um, I also have the 1911 large, um, which is a little bit bigger than the Pro Gear, um, just because of the cigar shape. Um, but I prefer the flat ends um, of something like this. Uh, which should come as no surprise to you guys because the Aurora Optima is my favorite pen uh, and it's pretty much the exact same size. The Optima is a little bit heavier, slightly wider, um, but pretty much same size. So I really, really like this size of the pen. Um, if it wasn't so flippin' expensive, I would prefer the Sailor King of Pen, um, but I think that it's outrageously priced for uh, the fact that it's just a little bit bigger than this, which is exactly the same. Uh, there is also a smaller version, which is the Slim. That is too small for me, um, so I don't really like that one, but um, this is sort of, I guess, like the, the middle range. Um, <laughs> I love the black trim to everything. Um, it is much more of a premium cost than um, like regular uh, because of the, the trim. Um, I have heard people say that they have problems with the coating on the nib coming off, but I mean, I've had it for a while now and uh, the person actually owns the pen has had it for a long time and that's never happened, but who knows? Uh, I, I believe people. <laughs> so I like the way that it fits in my hand. Um, it's, it's a shorter pen, but again, like the um, uh, Roar Optima, um, it's a bit shorter, but you can post it. It posts very securely, very deeply. Um, I don't use it posted, but I think a lot of people would prefer to use it this way. It adds a slight bit of weight and definitely some more length. Um, but I really like it. It's on the lighter side, which means that it's really great for long note taking. Um, this is a fine nib, um, but um, I would prefer the fine medium size. But again, it's not my pen, so I don't have control. Um, but I still really like it. It flows really great. It writes really great. Um, I still have no complaints. Uh, other than the fact that I think these pens are overpriced for what they are. I know you're paying primarily for the name um, and the fact that they're really reliable writers. Um, you know, any Sailor pen I've ever used has always been smooth, it's always flowed well, um, it's always been really well tuned. Um, you know, so it, there, there's not as much risk when you're investing in a Sailor um, because chances are it's going to work just fine for you. Um, you know, and you're not really going to experience too many issues. It's basically open it up, fill it up, and you're good to go for, you know, however long you have the pen. But I do think it's a little overpriced. Um, so <clears throat> for that reason, I don't think everyone's going to have one. But I understand why those who really, really like Sailor do because it is a solid performer. And the great thing about Sailor 2 is holy smokes do they have nib sizes. <laughs> you can go from like ultra extra fine all the way up to zoom nibs, which I have actually done a review of. I'm going to see if I can find it. I'll post it here. That nib is bananas. <laughs> holy moly. It's like you're writing with a freaking like marker this big. It's so 
cool. It's not one I want to have in my collection, but I think using it every once in a while is really neat. Um, so do I still like it? Yes. Yes, I do very much. Uh, would I recommend it? Yes, I would. Uh, like I said, it's a little um, expensive, so I wouldn't like tell people you absolutely 100% have to have this in your collection. But if you have a change, if you have the ability to try one, um, you know, either at a local pen shop or a buddy, you know, or something like that, definitely give it a try. Uh, because I think, uh, you know, these pens are, are perfect for some people. Let me flip the camera around and we'll do a, a writing sample. Okay, so <laughs> quick brown fox jumps over the lazy dog, uh, hard find nib. The ink for today is Lamy Crystal Agate, if that's how you pronounce it, sure. Uh, not a super huge fan of this ink. I'm just trying it out. It's a, I mean, it's a nice gray. I think I would like it much better if it was in a wetter pen. Um, this is a decently wet brighter pen, um, you know, considering how, how fine the nib is. Uh, and you do get some pretty decent line variation. Um, considering, you know, this is such a fine nib, uh, you can certainly go from a fine point to maybe a fine medium. You'd be pushing it if you called that medium, but you can certainly get some, uh, some variation with reverse writing. Uh, it's okay. It's a little bit scratchy, but it's okay. Um, you know, if you had a, <laughs> a thicker, or not a thicker, um, a more saturated uh, ink color, um, then you could uh, you could definitely see that more. Um, as far as like consistency with this nib, it, it's a traditional sailor. It works really well. It's consistent. I haven't had any issues with it. Um, you know, it definitely keeps up flow. Uh, no hard starts or skips. Um, the only thing I will say is because I guess it's such a fine nib, it is a little bit responsive to the ink that you put in here. If you put a super dry ink, then, you know, you're not really going to be able to see it much. And you do have much uh, drier lines on the upstroke than you do the downstroke. Uh, most pens have this. You don't typically notice unless you have a fine point nib. Um, you know, if you think about it, you put much less pressure on the upstroke than you do on the downstroke just naturally. So it's not a surprise, but it's more noticeable uh, in this one. But it's very smooth. Um, again, considering it's a, such a fine point and Japanese fine at that, uh, it's, it's pretty darn smooth. Um, so I, I, do, I do enjoy that. And it's a very like sharp line. Um, I don't really know how to explain that, but it's crisp. Like it just, it only puts the ink exactly where you want it, which is fantastic. Um, so do I like this pen? Yes, I very much do. Would I recommend this? Yeah, I would. Uh, I still think the price point is a little dumb. Um, that's really the only thing I don't like about this pen. Um, but other than that, the pen itself is great. Um, so second thoughts, still get the thumbs up. Uh, guys, if you like this video, hit that like button, hit the subscribe button if you want to see more like it every Monday and Friday and the occasional Q&A on Tuesdays and Thursdays. Guys, as always, thank you so much for watching. I really, really appreciate it. Uh, and uh, I'll see you next time. Bye.